Welcome to a new Angular tip. Today we want to cover routed component input bindings. So I want to explain you this latest Angular 16 feature based on a small example. We have a simple application with two buttons. The first button routes to user profile full with one, two, three in route and the second one to user profile limited one to three. So we have two routes configured once a user profile full and it accepts the user ID and another one user profile limited, which also accepts a user ID. Both routes route the exact same component, but the difference is that the first route passes in a data which says full profile true and the second one says data full profile false. So how can we now access this data in the user profile component? So we have two approaches. Of course, we first get an instance of the activated route. Then we can either use .snapshot.params to get the user ID from the params or .snapshot.data to get the full profile data. But we can also use a observable approach by just using activated route params and then map those params to get out the user ID. The same for the activated data. So what is the difference between those two approaches? Let's say we would route to the user profile one, two, three with the data full view. We can see that this is the snapshot data, user ID one, two, three and full profile true. And the same for the observable data. But what if we now have a button that says display user one, two, five, and this would now route to the exact same route, just change the user ID in the URL. So let's click on that. And we see that the snapshot is still one, two, three but the observable got adjusted with one to five. So that means with the observable approach, our user ID also updates. The snapshot is just once called when we first route to the component and then later we don't get any updates. So this is quite some code that we have to write and that's exactly where routed component input bindings come in. So let's go ahead and just use routed component input bindings in Angular 16. To do so, we first go to our app config where we also provide the router and we can say with component input binding. Of course, we have to import the with component input binding function. Once we set up our router to use component input binding, we can hop back to our component and add a add input with the name user ID. Note that this name has to match the query param that we have configured inside our app routes. So it has to match with this name here. So we now have an input for our user ID. Let's also add a input for our data. At this point, the ID is not happy because we still have our old code. So let's go ahead and remove all of that. Then let's adjust our HTML. Of course, we will no longer use this and this will be component input binding. So if we now rerun our application, we can again go to display profile for user one to three full view and we get the user ID one to three and the full profile true. If we now click on display user one to five, we can see that our user ID gets adjusted to one to five and we could get rid of all that boilerplate. So that's how to use routed component input bindings in Angular 16. This is an amazing feature and it saves us so many lines of code. So have fun using it and see you in the next tip.